Hey! So this video is going to be a little bit different to the normal vlog style video. It's just going to be a straight up how to. As you can see behind me, I've got the engine back together. That's going to be in the next episode of Drift STI that I'm going to be putting out. Uh, putting the heads back on and getting it all ready to go. But I thought while I'm at it, I'm going to just film straight up just doing the, the timing belt. I don't recommend doing it if you're not mechanically minded, if you're just trying to do it to save money or whatever, get a mechanic to do it. But this is basically the process that as a qualified mechanic, um, a lot of us use. I mean, I'm sure people do it different ways. This is the way that I do it. I've done a fair few over the years. Um, so I'm just gonna put the timing belt onto the engine. We can give you a few tips about like, you know, how to line up the cams and everything and yeah, how we do it. So uh, let's do it. So these are the, some of the tools that you'll need. Uh, we've got the cam tools and the crank tool. Uh, we've got a torque, torque wrench, um, some sockets. We've got 14, uh, got 10 mil, got a 22 mil for the crank. Um, and we've got, I uh, will also need a 12 mil for the idler. Um, I've got a little snap on um, electric gun here, really handy. Um, love this thing, 3.8. This, um, like a special, like kind of like spring, like cotter pin sort of thing. Um, that will, I'll show you what to do with this later. As well, a grenade pin for the tensioner so it can be compressed. All right, so f usually first step is um, you're taking off the timing belt. Um, as you can see, this has already been done, but basically the number one thing to know is to have the engine already set at top dead center. Don't just take off the timing belt wherever it is. It's annoying to time it all properly up again. Um, so what you can do to get it done quite easily and quickly and efficiently is make sure that this little um, like little notch on the crank is up and then you've got you know you've got to line up your single marks on the top of the engine your double marks on the cams together and then these ones go out to the side so um, when that's all lined up nicely then you can just take off the tensioner and once those guys are taken off the belt will be nice and loose to be able to just pull off some of the cams will jump around but at least you'd send it already at top dead center so um, you're not going to have like issues with valves clashing or anything like that it's basically designed to be taken off like that usually the two on the left bank of the engines so left being if we're facing forwards left side they usually jump around a bit so you know, as long as they were just like the ones on the right hand side were, um, that's fine if they jump a little bit to the left or the right. Um, they're going to be basically sort of sprung when um, you put it all back together. So um, yeah, let's get going. Um, I've replaced all of the bearings, the idler bearings on this engine. So it's got nice brand new ones. Um, last thing you want to do, there we go. Uh, the last thing you want is one of these things going and then your timing belt letting loose and then blowing valves, damaging the engine exponentially. Um, that's pretty, pretty bad thing to happen. Um, so what we want to do is, yeah, replace those. Um, also get a new tensioner because, you know, you don't want to keep reusing old stuff. By the time you're doing a timing belt, generally all of that stuff is flogged anyway. So um, it may be cheaper to just buy the belt but I 100% recommend just doing the idlers and stuff every time you do a belt. I just, I don't blink at the cost, I just make sure that I do it because it's a lot cheaper than doing your engine. So the belt that I have is a Gates Kevlar belt. Um, it's a little bit old, it's probably about six months old. Um, I put it on prior to doing the engine, but um, yeah, really good belt. Um, Kevlar, obviously. Uh, racing racing belt. It's not going to skip any teeth or anything. It's not going to stretch. Um, Gates is a really good company. do is I want to time it on the right hand side first get that all nice and then when the left side's ready to go then that's when we can all we can put the tensioner in and make sure that it's perfectly timed
you want to put it like maybe like a tooth out when it was tight and then what you want to do is you want to tension this this way so that it's perfectly aligned with this one but then it's tight and then what we do up here is then once it's perfect I put this on here it's like a sort of like a coiter pin or whatever they call it um, that's just holding in the tension for the whole sort of tense side of this belt here and then this bit over here is nice and loose um, so that we can install um, our thing so what I've got here is a grenade pin they come with the new tensioners um, you gotta make sure you get one of these um, because what we want to do now is we want to push this guy in I'm just gonna use like a vise and just slowly wind them in and put that through just so that it's not tense completely all right you can see that the grenade pin is through just to the other side it's on the front side and then what I've done as well is there's a little rubber o-ring that goes a little o-ring that goes around that holds this washer on um, and it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease on there also put a little bit of grease on the inside um, where this um, basically moves so once you've done that it's ready to go back into the engine Now that that's wound in hand tight, what we want to do is pull this pin out. I'll bring a, bring a bit of tension down on. And what you want to do is you want to get a small pry bar. And what you want to do is you just want to make sure it's just coming down just a little bit, fully extended, so that the rest of this is nice and tight. And then what we want to do now is we want to tighten this up to the correct torque, which is 39 newton meters. Is we want to make sure that all of the markings are lined up with each other. And then what I'm going to do is now turn the engine around in a few rotations, make sure nothing's clashing or touching. You don't want it to be out one, one mark. Now what, did you, what you want to happen here after doing that is you do two full revolutions. So that's um, basically bring it back to top dead center and you want all of your markings to be lined up again after you've done those two revolutions. So we got one here. Where's that torch? One there, got the two and the two lined up there. This guy over the side, this one on the top dead center, and that marking up in there. And then we've got this one up the top, and then we've got these two right there. This guy to the side. So that's looking really good. Um, basically, these are all tensioned to 39 millimeters. And then this guy over here is 25. Um, that's all factory spec. Um, so yeah, now what we're gonna do is put the timing case back on the engine, and uh, she's and then the crank crank pulley, and she's ready to go. Yeah, thanks very much for watching. And um, the next episode of Drift STI, I'll be showing you how I put the heads back on with the ARP studs. All the cams back together and everything. Um, engine's fully built now. So, um, yeah, ready to go back into the car. Um, all I gotta do now is put this coilovers in um, and the handbrake assembly, hub assemblies. And uh, yeah, she's done. Uh, obviously, oil and all that sort of stuff. Start her up. So, um, if you enjoy my videos, I really hope um, you do. Um, don't forget to subscribe or like or comment. Um, let me know. Um, I love having a community of people that are actually interested in doing this sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it keeps me making videos. So um, thanks very much.